Welcome. The big question is, do I have a pinched nerve? And if I do, how do I correct it? That's what we're all looking for. We want answers. We want to feel better. We want to get out of pain, correct? So let's just talk briefly about the spine, the cervical spine, a normal C-shaped lordotic curve, kyphotic curve in the thoracic, a lordotic curve, inward curve again in the lumbar spine. Look from the side, looks like an S shape. If we look from the front or the back, it should be straight. If it's curved like this or like this, it's called a scoliosis. So a pinched nerve, how do we get a pinched nerve? Is a pinched nerve mean that a bone is out of place, putting pressure on a nerve, kind of like you're stepping on a garden hose, trying to water a garden? Well, the nerve is being inflamed and the nerve is lacking impulses from the brain that's coming out that nerve. Just like if you step on a garden hose, you're blocking off water into the garden. But the bone never actually hits the nerve. It's the inflammation around the disc, around the tissue, around the muscle, or around the nerve that actually becomes irritated or swollen that affects the nerve. Nerves can be affected in different places of the body, commonly from the neck, nerves in the neck go into the shoulder, the chest, between the shoulder blades, down the shoulder, arm, hand, and the fingers, numbness, tingling, pain, cramping, the nerves around the mid-back come in between the rib cage, commonly called thoracic neuritis or intercostal neuritis. That's where you get pain that comes around to the chest. Uh, and the nerves that come off the lower back affect the lower back, go to the buttocks down the leg called sciatica, burning, tingling, numbness, cramping, aching, and that can be very painful as well. And that will usually affect down the legs to the big toe if it's sciatica. Although sciatica only affects down the buttocks and the back and outside of the thigh does not affect the front of the thigh. So if you have irritation of the nerve uh, a little higher up called the femoral nerve, you can feel sensation in the front of the thigh. Otherwise it's not called uh, sciatica. So you can have irritation of a nerve in the elbow, the uh, cubital fossa, that you can get tingling and numbness into the little finger. You can get carpal tunnel syndrome, compression of the median nerve, entrapment. Uh, in the shoulder. Uh, you can have entrapment in different areas of the body, but those are the most common areas. So the question here is, what is a pinched nerve? A pinched nerve basically means inflammation on the nerve. The nerve is being irritated, it's being compressed, you're lacking impulses that's coming from the brain, that's making its way out that nerve. Understand the nerve must travel from the outside to the brain, so it has to travel from the outside of that nerve and maybe your neck, make its way up that nerve to the spinal cord, up the brain, the brain interprets it, the brain sends messages back down the spinal cord, out that nerve to that particular uh, cell, if it's your muscle, <clears throat> if it's your stomach, whatever it is. So everything has nerves controlling it, otherwise those parts of the body do not function. So the most important thing is that we look at the spine, we're concerned more with the spine, more with pinched nerves occur in the spine, in the neck, underneath the back of the skull. Those nerves underneath the back of the skull can go over the head behind the eyes, people get headaches, most commonly coming from tension-related headaches from the, from the muscles being pulled up from the back of the traps behind the skull, affecting the greater occipital nerve root, affecting over the head behind the eyes. So nerves do play a lot of funny games. The question here is when you have an irritation of a nerve, how do you know it's being pinched? Well, generally when you pinch on a nerve and you increase the range of motion or you change the, the mobility of the joint, for example, if the nerve is being affected in the neck and we can come back and we extend the neck backwards and as we close the space where the nerve comes out of and the pain gets worse, then hey, we can pinpoint that nerve to where it's coming from. Now, that nerve also supplies different areas. For example, the fifth and sixth nerve will affect the shoulder, the bicep area. Uh, the dermatome of the area will affect the first and second finger. Uh, then we look at the eighth cervical nerve will affect the little finger. The seventh cervical nerve will affect the middle finger. It will affect the triceps. So we have to know basically the puzzle. The puzzle basically means that if a nerve is being pressed or compressed and irritated, however it's being compressed, is the dermatome affected, meaning is you feeling uh, tingling, numbness? Is the muscle weak? 
So generally, if you have any weakness of muscles, we can guarantee you that there is nerves being inflamed and irritated. They are being pinched or inflamed somewhere. If the back of the calf is atrophied, in other words, the calf muscle is starting to weaken and it's smaller than the other one, yes, there is compression somewhere. So it's very important that you understand the etiology of where it's coming from. If you just take an, a, a pill, the mastopain or an anti-inflammatory, a muscle relaxer, you're not getting to the source of the problem. You're correcting the effect, but not getting to the root or the cause. The next step is, what do you do if you just irritate something? If, you, if it's inflamed, if it hurts, if it's painful, always ice. Ice, the first 24 to 36 hours, you can use it every couple of hours. Put a paper towel over the area of the neck, the back, if you just hurt it. You can use it the first couple of days. After that, heat, moist heat is actually very good. And you can actually alternate moist heat and ice that will actually bring blood in and take inflammation out in the chronic phase as well. The next step is, is that if you have a disc herniation or a bulging disc or something's being compressed, there are different things that can be done. Physical therapy, ultrasound, electrical muscle stimulation, manual traction, mechanical traction, along with ice or heat. Uh, over the door traction, you can look at my video on my, on my channel here. I'll attach it below, by the way, our link. You can look at over the door traction. It saved literally thousands and thousands of people from getting surgery. The body has remarkable ability to repair and heal. For example, a compressed and irritated nerve in the lower back may not be coming from the disc, even if you have a disc herniation. It could be coming from the sciatic nerve being inflamed or irritated from the piriformis muscle. I have piriformis stretches or different stretches you can do. I always recommend before you use your sledgehammer, use the fly swatter. Try to see if you can zap things out early in the game instead of doing things that's invasive and dangerous. So, there's a lot that can be done. You can see uh, your chiropractor, your physical therapist, your massage therapist. Uh, you can look at a lot of my videos here, a lot of self-help videos. I have many, 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 I have hundreds of them on my channel on all different kinds of conditions and hopefully that will really help you tremendously in getting well naturally. But remember, the most important thing about nerves is recognizing it uh, where it's being compressed, where the problem is, where the source is, so you know how to correct it the right way. If you have questions, leave your comments below. Subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive more of our self-help videos. Uh, obviously, uh, I think one of the best on the internet, hopefully. Uh, and most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel. Thank you.